right, so we're back for another episode of whatever this thing is. And um, I've got yet another drawing on the screen. Um, and hi, Stellar. Your, your smiley's upside down. Turn that smile upside down. And uh, yeah, um, this is one we did the other day on, on Zoom, I believe. Uh, the other day being um, at some point previous to today. Um, so, uh, so I did that. Uh, I went back and changed it a little bit. I elongated her torso just a tiny bit and dropped her legs down. Uh, I don't know if I did anything else. But, um, and I'm going to change her hand. Uh, the model had a, a water bottle. She just had her hand resting on a water bottle. The whole pose was pretty, except for this claw hand. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to change that somehow. So we'll go ahead and get started. It's not that I'm, like, super popular or, you know, big famous dude or anything, but lately I get a lot of friend requests. And uh, if you're watching this video, we're probably already friends, although I'm aware of a couple times uh, somebody watching the video prior to sending a friend request. So I'll throw this out there because there's no other context for throwing it out there. Um, I don't just accept a friend request. Um, I used to, but I had several in a row that, you know, I sent a friend, I, I accepted a friend request and immediately had somebody, uh, soliciting money or, uh, telling me who to vote for or, um, uh, telling me why I'm going to go to hell because uh, my, you know, I'm not a good Christian or, uh, you know, something. And, uh, you know, this is a person I don't even know. So I, I'm reluctant to just blindly accept uh, friend requests. Um, I am going to pay some attention, you know, when I, I I'm, I'm going to go ahead and look at the person's profile. Um, I talked to somebody the other day. <laughs> uh, it's a long story. She was on she was on the Zoom thing for the for the sci-fi conventions, and I had sent her a friend request. I don't God knows how long ago, um, back when I met her uh, at a at a convention, and um, and she had never she had never uh, accepted my friend request, and so I I razzed her about it during the Zoom thing. And so she she went right away and, and accepted my friend request. But she she said, you know, you know, I get dozens a, a day, you know, I could get a hundred in a in a day. And there's no way I'm gonna go check everybody out it, unless there's something about them that's that's obvious uh, why we should be friends and and uh so yeah, you know, she's just like you gotta send me a note or something, and I'm like, I'm about to that point where I'm I'm thinking yeah, um, you need to send me something, <laughs> you know, you need to give me some kind of clue. But I do go and check out uh, people's page, and uh, and I try to I try to determine if this is somebody that has interests in common with me, and are they. And it doesn't take much, you know, if there were, we've got a bunch of mutual friends, one or two won't do it because that just could mean they are scamming one or two of my other friends. But, um, uh, you know, do they have a ton of friends in common? Um, do they, are they a member of a bunch of groups that I'm on or, or any group that I'm on? Um, it means that they've seen my work somewhere and they like it. You want to send me a friend request, and that's fine. Um, so I'll accept, I'll accept those. But every now and then, there's somebody that uh, I don't. Know, maybe there's a lot of friends in common, 
or maybe uh, I determined that they are on this other group. They're on this sci-fi group that I've joined. And uh, so I'm kind of inclined to go ahead and say, yeah. But I looked at their Facebook page and it's nothing but politics. I mean, absolutely nothing at all but politics. And, um, and I'm inclined to say, okay, you may be into science fiction sometimes, but you're mostly into politics and, uh, I'm mostly not. I mean, I have political persuasions that I don't usually uh, inflict on anybody else. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't really necessarily want to set myself up to be proselytized. And so sometimes I'm real reluctant to say okay to a friend like that. Um, you know, this this page ought to be about your ought to be about your interests. I mean, if I look at your profile, uh, I think that tells me what what I'm likely to hear from you. If I'm going to hear something from you, you know, it's most likely going to be politics, even if it's politics that I generally agree with. You know, it's just I didn't come here for that. I didn't come here to to say, oh, yes, those people suck. Um, you know, that's uh, there's more to my life than sitting around talking about how how somebody sucks um i really want to do other things with my time so so that's the thing it's it's getting it's getting to the point where it's like i get sent a friend request and i think uh you know i was like because it's kind of turning into a chore you know i um i do get uh i don't get dozens or hundreds a day like some people but I get half a dozen a day, um, and I I go and check them out, and and uh, sometimes I don't accept any of them because it doesn't appear to be anything in common. Um, it's a weird thing that happens. I don't I don't know if it's a cloned account or or what, but uh, you know the the profile pic might be some beautiful blonde girl. And uh, the banner might be, you know, pictures of her and her friends with wine glasses or something. And then like, there's like five posts that look like they're from this person. And then all the rest of the posts look like some teenage boy in Nigeria. Um, and uh, I don't know what's going on there exactly, but it's like, this is weird. And uh, neither of those personalities have anything in common with me. So I don't, I don't know what's uh uh, going on. Hi, Victor, and hi, Sharon. Sharon says she has a political group or two for that, and uh, I posted my adventures and fun on, on my timeline. Yeah, see, your timeline's enjoyable to visit, um, but uh, yeah, if it was all politics, even though we're friends, I don't know, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I'd silence you or, or, or whatever, because it's just like sometimes I don't want to see it. Uh, Especially right now with the election about to happen, it's just it gets to the point where I'm like, God, I don't want, I don't want to hear it. You know, I've already voted, um, so you know, even if I'm getting material from from someone I agree with, um, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. I was starting to sketch a little cute dragon or something, but I'm just not liking it. Not digging it I don't dig it I, I dig it I dig it um so yeah that's a thing that's as political as I'm gonna get I think Sometimes somebody says, oh, no, you got political at one time or something. And uh, I beg to differ. Um, I, I will, I, or at least my, my pledge to myself is I will never, I will never address the issue. 
okay? But I'm sometimes very fascinated with how we talk about an issue. Um, you know, how how the media addresses the issue or something like this. So, like, um, you know, this is all safely behind us, so I needn't uh, worry too much about it. But uh, you know, George Bush Jr. has come and gone uh, as far as presidents go. Um, I was very, very interested in how the media talked about him. You know, even when the media didn't uh, overtly take a stance, um, they would say things like uh, the George Bush war machine. Okay. They wouldn't say the army. You know, you know, it's like, what's the George Bush war machine? You know, there was never a Barack Obama war machine, although we had an army the whole time. Um, but uh, yeah, they would talk about the George Bush war machine, um, which is um, is slanted. You know, it it uh, it gives you a different feeling about the military, for one thing you associate it irrevocably with George Bush. Um, and then, you know, you get another president in and uh, and then they start saying, you know, the president did this, the president did that, and oh, and the military did this. You know, they, they separate them, <laughs> you know, whereas before they conflated them. And so I find that very, very interesting to to note how much I don't know how much it influenced people, but I know how much it was attempting to be manipulative. It was it was attempting to be extremely manipulative. Um, and uh, don't care one way or the other, but about... those presidents, but um, but I, I was very fascinated with how the language and uh, how associating one thing to another was was affecting the way we thought about people. So I'll talk about things like that, although usually I won't even do that much, but uh, But I would never talk about, like, you should vote for this president, or you shouldn't vote for that guy, or, uh, you know, he's doing a good job, or he's not doing a good job, or, uh, you know, the left is doing this, or the right is doing that. Um, you won't get that shit from me. So I changed my mind about the dragon and I started putting a cat here. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like much either. We may wind up just inserting a placeholder. Say, cat-shaped thing will go here eventually. Because um, I didn't really want to just get hung up on it. But I do like the idea of her having a pet of some kind. Yeah, I'm not even going to try. I need to get that like directly in front of myself and uh, and get some cat pictures out and uh, and then I can draw it. No problemo. I like them big hoop earrings. You've probably noticed.
once upon a time in darker days, um, I was an assistant manager at a at a dollar store in the mall. Um, one of the fun things about it was uh, that was a, a a work environment that didn't attract many people other than um, teenage girls. So <laughs> I hung out with teenage girls all day, basically, um, and did nothing inappropriate. Damn it! Um, but it, they were they were still fun, and. Um, I was I was back in the office one day and the little squawk box beeped, which usually means, you know, we got a situation or, you know, I'm out of change or, you know, something. So I picked it up. What do you need? And uh, and she said that the girl, her name was Rusty. I'm not giving anything away. She was her name's Rusty. She was up there and she goes, Gil, there's a hoochie mama up here. And I had never heard that expression before in my life. And I was just like. I had to finish what I was doing and like lock the lock the uh, office behind me and, and everything and go up up front and I was like, "There's a what?" <laughs> and, and she said, "There's a hoochie mom." And uh, and uh, it was just it was a it was a scantily clad gal with huge hoop earrings and extremely short shorts and. Uh, and uh whatever and uh she wanted to alert me to that and i was like okay why are you telling me and she said because every time there's one in the store you're you're following them with your eyes and your mouth is hanging open and drools coming down off your chin I was like, that's not true um but maybe it was I called her Hoochie Mama after that, just because. She said, we have to get a bucket and follow you around to catch all the jewels so it doesn't get all over the floor. She was mean, she was mean to me. And uh, Sharon says trolls and bots, probably the, the, the people sending you friend requests, etc. Uh, Scott says she has a great face. Thank you. Yes, she does. Um, and uh, yeah, Hoochie Mama. It's not like they have many places to conceal shoplifted on. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, we, we had... Uh, I, I'm I'm interested in uh, Hoochie Mamas, but I'm also interested in in uh, I, I, I've kind of like got a latent interest in fashion. Uh, I can't sew to save my life, that's for sure, but uh, it interests me, you know, um, watching you know, the choices people make. It it, it always interests me and in seeing. You know, what's not just what's in style, but like the direction somebody went with it. So, one thing that was fun up there, there was a there was a Catholic girls' school that obviously had a dress code that was uh, white shirt, plaid the plaid skirt. Um, white stockings and black shoes that was the dress code and there were girls in there by the hundreds that were wearing that to the letter but the uh the vast array of interpretations that were put on that was just uh, amazing and uh and that was really fun. I mean, because within that description, you had the goths, you had the punks, you had the vampires, you had the 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 preppies, you had the the you know the girl that did it straight, you know, the way the nuns wanted her to, and and uh, and you know, 
it was just it was just really interesting um, to see that. All right, other than making a crazy cat lady, what am I making? What am I doing? I don't know. There are some costumes that I might, uh, uh, you draw costumes very well, but Sharon says, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess that's where one of the things I'm channeling that interest into. Um, there's something, if, if she was standing straight up and facing front, there's a certain kind of costume that I would design. If she was facing, you know, if her back was to us, there's a different kind of costume I would design. Sitting down, there's a different kind of costume I designed because, um, you know, if she had some tiny bikini on right there, you can't even see it, right? It's just about gone. So it's almost pointless to design that because, um, because it doesn't give you anything to look at. So it makes me want to give her uh, some other, some other outfit. Something that's visually interesting. A shoe. And uh, I was talking about crayfish the other day because there was a story about mutant crayfish and that reminded me of a story and um, and then I got sidetracked and I didn't tell the story so lucky you you're gonna hear it today my back is just um, so not far away from where we lived, but uh, it's still kind of a, a walk. Um, there was a, a creek that often had at least a little bit of water, usually had at least a little bit. And uh, the water was filthy. Uh, it was a really old, really poor section of town right along the creek just up up the creek from that and, uh, they were still putting their sewage right into the creek back then um so yeah it's a wonder i'm alive um because we used to go down and play in the water um but there were crayfish and one day my um Uh, Sharon says, a, can't, a sane cat sorceress? Um, so instead of a crazy cat lady? Yeah, I could just give her a bunch of cats. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Um, so yeah, um, By the way, you see this thing I just did? 
once upon a time I was a sign painter and I would paint pizza, right? And then I'd go, well, that's not enough. It needs more to fill in the space and it needs contrasting color. So I'd put a, a background panel behind it. And then, you know, there's modifiers on, you know, it doesn't just say pizza, it's got to say like the price. So I put a little circle down here and say $5.99, right? Okay. And sometimes when my mind is just wandering, I keep, I'm still doing that. Um, that I wanted to do something else with this picture. And I dropped a panel and I made a shape before deciding what the panel or the shape are. Um, uh, so yeah, as opposed to a crazy cat lady. Um, yeah, I, I like it. She could be a crazy cat sorceress. So, it's going to be one of these little brazier things with fire. And, uh, because sorceresses have that. Crayfish. Um, one day, my brother, who is four years older than me, and his friend went down to the creek and they caught a bunch of crayfish. And I don't know, I think these might have been the first crayfish I'd ever seen in my life. And, um, and they brought, they had a bucket full of water and a bunch of crayfish in it. Um, and they're big ones too. They, you know, they could get eight, nine inches long and, um, you know, just the body, you know, just head to tail. And then they got the big claws. And, um, so he, they carried these, this thing home, you know, two of them together carried this bucket. It was heavy. And, uh, they carry it home and they dumped it out in the front yard and, and we had crayfish running all over the, the yard. And it was really cool. And we were running around uh, um, playing with the crayfish, you know, and moving them around. Uh, sometimes my former neighbor, uh, Peggy Hickman, she, she watches my videos. Um, and I don't specifically remember, but I suspect that Peggy Hickman got chased around by some little shit like me, um, with a crayfish. <laughs> um, I, it just, it just, it seems like the sort of thing that, uh, that I might have done. But anyway, played with, played with crayfish all over the yard. It was fun. And then my dad said, Okay, take them back. And, and they were like, oh, I don't want to. <laughs> and uh, it was like, well, you, know, you can't just leave them. They're not going to live here. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's cruel not to put them back. So you brought them all the way here. You're going to take them all the way back. And, well, you give us a ride, Dad. It's like, no, you carry them all the way up here. You're going to carry them all the way, you know, and hurry up. you got to be back in time for supper. And so on. They filled the bucket with water again. They bloated all the crayfish in. And they carried it on down to the creek. And, uh, <laughs> well, it turns out they didn't get them all. And, uh, surprisingly, over the next couple of years, we did have the uh, surviving crayfish in, in the yard. Um, they burrow down under some yard debris, or maybe they burrowed way into the dirt and then it came up later or something. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> my dad was cleaning the, uh, the water meter box, you know, and it would get all full of leaves that got all 
half half uh, rotten and and stuff and it'd be all gross and and uh, so <laughs> there's bugs in there and there's like cockroaches and stuff so you're always being careful when you're doing that stuff and uh watching for bugs <laughs> move some leaves across and here's this giant <laughs> cockroach with, with with claws you know and, and like and, and he's like ah! and, and, uh, and so my my brother got a got to talk into again although uh it was a year maybe two years after the fact but um it was pretty funny they do make that noise they go Ew! And then lightning shoots out of their eyes, and, and then they destroy Tokyo. But, uh, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen many times. Oh no! There goes Tokyo. Oh no! It's a great fish. Mutant crayfish. I like that. I like the three elements in the background. Compositionally, I'm liking it. I don't know if I'm going to keep her naked or if I'm going to give her a costume. I will think that over. And I will certainly go find a picture of a cat, because I have plenty. And uh, and I'll draw one of my one of my previous cats um, will be will be here uh, in some way or another. Cats that we have had before. Have come to symbolize death in my dreams. Uh, I don't quite understand. Well, I, I guess I understand it. But, you know, uh, you know, cat dies, and then uh, sometimes I'll I'll have some dream where that one of my dead cats is there. Um, and I'll eventually realize this dream is about is about being dead. Uh, you know, it's just like I'll because I'll be in some some strange place and that I don't understand and and uh, and then like my my cat will be there talking to me talking to me. and uh, it's like my spirit guide in the afterlife or something. I don't believe in spirits or an afterlife. But I do think um, you have symbolism in your dreams. Um, I think your subconscious mind talks to you. So. That's cool. That's kind of fun. And, uh, braziers and scrying bowls and deep dish frying pizza pans. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did probably more pizza signs in my life than probably any other type of sign. I think that's got to be. I think I've, written, I've written pizza more than any other thing. Um, so anyway, that's all for tonight, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow at the same time with more of the same. Thanks for coming. Bye bye.